Okay, so now that you have a good idea of how variables work, let's cover the basics of mathematics and how you can use math in Python. So let's get rid of all this and let's just print 3 plus 5. Scrolling down you can see you can actually just use this as a calculator. If I wanted to do something bigger like 497 times 85, hit play, you'll see it'll give you the answer here. So you can do more than just addition and multiplication. Obviously you can subtract, you can even divide. If you wanted to do double slash, it will give you. There is also modulus, so you can get the remainder of the division. And going down we see 72 is the remainder. Here's another calculation you can try out for fun to get the remainder, but it does not get the perfect value of the remainder because it's using other forms of math to get there. And the computer works with ones and zeros, so it's not going to be perfect every time. The computer works in a binary system, while this is a base 10 system. So if you need to be extremely accurate, there's other ways that you can do these calculations. For most people, it is accurate enough. Let's add some variables up here. Let's say x is 9, y is 20, z is x times y, and you guessed it, we can print out z and it will give us x times y, 180. Hopefully this makes sense. Essentially what it's doing is it's saying z is going to get the value of x times y being evaluated here. It's going to assign the value and then we can just print it out, 180. You can also do more complex versions of mathematics here. You can say x times y divided by 2 to the power of 5. If you know about order of operations, this is going to be executed first and evaluated and then this is going to be separately evaluated and then it's going to take the division of these two sides and we will get the value z and you'll see it's 5.625 and it should be a much smaller number if we do 20 go down and we have a very small number so looking at w3schools.com and going to python numbers you can see there's not only floating point but there's integers and there's complex if you don't know the use of complex numbers, you probably won't need to use them. So if we copy this and we put it right here, you can see this is a comment just explaining that this is an integer because we don't have a point zero. This would turn into a float if we put the point zero. The float just says this is a floating point number. This is a complex number. And if we copy the example to print out the type, we can see the type of X will be printed out as scrolling down run that, you'll see it's an integer, it's a float, and a complex number. We can get rid of these comments and it won't make a difference in how the code runs, you can see. Now the word class here might be a little confusing to you. That's for a future lesson where we will go over what classes are. Essentially it's just a way to classify things. But if we just print out x and y and z by themselves, you'll see we just get the values that we assigned them to here. We can also just print x plus y, and despite the fact these are different types, Python will know how to evaluate the whole thing as a floating point because you need to have this integer turn into a floating point for it to mathematically join with the y. So we will see 3.8. Going down, you'll see integers. Here are more examples you can use. These are examples of floats. This is another example of how floats work. You can do times 10 to the third, and e will act as times 10 to the power of whatever you put after e. If you click try it yourself, you can even run the code and see what happens on the other side. If we put x, y, and z, we can run that, and you'll see we get the values that we assigned here. Whether you have capital E or lowercase, it will work the same. If you're into complex numbers, here's more examples on that. And here's even more examples if you want to copy this and play around with that. In case the comments are confusing, just remember if you type hashtag, anything you type after it is going to be a comment and it doesn't make any difference in how the code runs. So I could say the following line of code is my favorite and print out 9e2 and it should show 900 right here. This is a floating point number because we used e. We can also use lowercase and it's the same thing. And going down, you'll see import random, and we can actually use this import to do more advanced things with a dot operator. Don't worry about any of this. 
we will cover what imports are and we will be covering what the dot operator is and how all of this works. With all of that said, I will see you in the next video.